Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. We gotta have a discussion today about this Revolt TV. Oh man. Yeah, man. Uh shout out Sean Award. Shout out to Killer Mike. Um I appreciate him name dropping me, you know, um, in the context of a larger discussion about black politics, but we're gonna talk about all of it today because there's some good and some bad, probably more bad than good that I saw. Um, this is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. Um, I want to have a discussion about the Revolt TV Summit, what I saw. I'll probably in the final version end up cutting in some clips, some graphs, some pictures as I um, always do to kind of give you guys a broader context of what's going on. Shout out to everybody. Thank you for taking the time on this, uh, I believe it's Monday morning, to have a brief discussion. I won't hold you more than probably 15 or 20 minutes, hopefully. Don't hold me to it. So. Revolt TV is the station that Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, was basically brought into or actually given by Comcast as part of the Memorandum of Understanding signed back in 2010 by Morial and Sharpton. We got to start off here because when Revolt is announced, you have Sean Combs, who's never run a station, and then also Magic Johnson was given Aspire, and he's going to do like a music station. It's important to understand that because now we're all the way in the space where because we have shifted the conversation, meaning American distance of slavery, black America at large, into a political space, he's trying to actually shift the station because he doesn't have content. That's my view. So let's just talk about it. Revolt TV has started in 2012. It comes two years after the Memorandum of Understanding is signed, and it's supposed to be black owned. It's unclear how much a white man named Mr. Hendrix owns of Revolt or how much control Puffy has. It is run by an Indian woman named Roma, I forgot her last name. She had accusations against her of racism by some of the black staff. Let's talk today. So this is the, the rooting of Revolt TV. You can't have this discussion without getting real about the real. I think we are so happy about being on TV that we don't understand that this is the platform. Right now, I'm at uh, about 600 people. I expect to be about 1,500, 2,000 people. I don't need Revolt TV. Revolt TV, effectively, from that summit, showed that they need me and Yvette Carnell and American Decisions of Slavery to have a real discussion about black politics. Because what we saw on that stage, to me, wasn't a discussion about black politics. It was about black branding. You saw Candace Owens on the stage. She had no space on the stage. Somebody would say, well, um, isn't black conservative, shouldn't black conservatives have a space? Not really, given their numbers, but if there is one, it's not Candace Owens. She don't know nothing. Let's talk. You had T.I. talking about reparations and nothing he said was accurate. You had Jay Morrison stand up and talk about some kind of black empowerment and black voting. I don't know where this man came from. I just know that I talked to a man and I'm gonna cut it in so you can actually get it from an actual show that I did where he filed Jay Morrison had to file bankruptcy and the man wants his money because he, he he promised that he would sell the man's mama house or something and it came up where he didn't do it and it's in the bankruptcy filing I don't want to hear about from that guy about our reparations I don't want to hear from that guy who doesn't have advanced degrees and also excuse you know I don't have no problem with him being a felon but add it all up I have a problem with the addition I don't want to hear from him about what black folks need to do. I want to hear from Sandy Darity. I want to hear from um, Byron Allen, richest, one of the richest black men in the history of the nation now. Y'all can believe what y'all want, but I tell you right now, just the weather station probably is a billion and a half to two. I'm not here to hear about Puff Daddy and Revolt. I'm here, Puffy, just tell us how much you own of Revolt and if it's functionally working. Because there's a podcast where the, the, C, the person running Revolt, the Indian woman, Roma, um, said basically that they didn't get enough capital. It's my belief that they were given the station without the functional capital to make a station. And now Puffy don't want to tell us. You can tell us. See, we gonna get into it today because one of the things that was lacking in that discussion was not just a knowledge of what reparations is, but the data itself and the civil rights cases going on, basically blackness itself. You had a bunch of branding going on. You had a bunch of ignorance, but you didn't have tone talks on there. 
And I'm going to give you a piece of what I'm saying today because this is the discussion. I can have it from my, uh, my living room. I can have it from Dash Radio. And if they had me on the revolt stage, I'd have to move the chairs because everybody got to move because this is the discussion. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 is the, is the first Civil Rights Act. It was given to the descendants of slavery to guarantee fairness in, in law and in, in, in uh, contracting and land ownership. You can go read it yourself. What a fun fundamentally is happening is that Comcast, the company that over that sees over Revolt, that gave Revolt to Puffy, is bringing that Civil Rights Act to the Supreme Court to cut it back. How do you get to have a summit about our black agenda then? That was the wrong forum. They have to rescind the, con the, the, the whole uh, case to actually even have a black agenda discussion. I bet you most of the people, if not all of the people, other than the people I informed, didn't even know the Civil Rights Act is going on, the Civil Rights case is going on. I'm here to have a discussion because I don't know what these people are talking about. Let's get into it. We in the chat today. We on fire. Please support the chat, support Tone Talks, tonetalks.org. Share this because we about to have the discussion about how the revolt summit wasn't no summit and missed a lot of revolting that we need to do to get our black economics right. See, part of the problem is that we start off with who owns revolt or the idea was from Puff Daddy, which came out of Bad Boy and all the hip hop idealism of black potential. What we found out since then is that these hip hop black potential people are all just pieces of pieces of pieces of things. Puff Daddy is a piece of a piece of a thing in everything that he does. You look at the liquor with Ciroc, I, I, it came out that he just a marketing man for Ciroc. He don't own it. He just do as he got to sell bottles and then he gets some. Let's talk. How we think that revolt ain't the same way until we see the paperwork. It's not 100% black owned. Guaranteed. It's not. I don't know what's going on, but I think right now everybody's spinning. Revolt TV had to let off staff because they're not doing well. But this ain't the space to capitalize on. This is not the, the space to get commercial access so that you can get your wheels spinning again. This is the space where you get real. This is the space where I don't know if you can say this on Comcast Station, but Comcast, you got to rescind the lawsuit. And also Donald Trump is siding with you for some reason. What kind of deals y'all got going on? You have Donald Trump and Comcast siding against our first civil rights act that allows us to do contracting. And the revolt summit that's supposed to be talking about a black agenda didn't talk about it, to my knowledge. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll look at the chat. Let me know if they talked about the Civil Rights Act of 1866, the Supreme Court case, November 13th. I ain't here for it. But what they did talk about, let's talk. Let's talk. You had you had T.I., what they did talk about, you had T.I. effectively go into this whole speech, and I want to read it to get it in the record, and then I'm going to go over the ignorance of what he said. Jay Morrison, who I'll talk about towards the end, is this supposed like entrepreneur uh, businessman. He had this Tulsa real estate fund. He had black people putting money into it, and I, I said, no, nah, that ain't going to work, bro. You got to show the numbers, and when we pulled the numbers up, the numbers ain't add up. So now... He got he asked this question. I believe him and T.I. know each other of T.I. T.I. is the same guy who went to do the Opportunity Zone thing, you know, with Tim Scott, the Republican in the White House. That The Opportunity Zones are nothing more than a way to, to gild the ghetto. They don't work. I don't know how to tell these people. Like, look, I did a report with Sandy Darity, leading economist in this space, in the space of stratification economics, the economics of wealth transfers between generations. It's on the Duke website. I did an article on it on Fortune magazine. One of the sections is gilding the ghetto doesn't change the ghetto. I'm not here guessing. I don't know what these people are. It's not a matter of us sitting down. So people will say, why don't you sit down with T.I.? It's him just moving and get the hell out the way. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't need to talk to him. I need, I need him to move out of the way so that black America can be awakened to the truth of their situation. I need him to understand your rap career is your career. If it's not here now, I don't need you talking politics because you don't know what you're talking about. I need you to understand that when you look at wealth stratified across across black America, we only have three trillion dollars. There's one hundred and seven trillion dollars in household wealth. White folks have one hundred. We only have three. Right. But it's calcified in the top 10 percent of our families. They have two point two five trillion dollars. 
What does that mean for somebody who may be worth four million or seven million, whatever this man is worth? That means effectively he does not understand what the hell you're going through. Let me say it again. He is a wealth hoarder. You have a wealth hoarder telling you about reparations that didn't graduate from college. I don't even know if he went. I'm just telling you he can't speak to this. I'm just I'm not guessing when I say that because I'm listening to what comes out of his mouth and he don't know what he's saying. Let's read it. So Jay Morrison said to go to our nationality, our flag, do have uh, we have a black vote day. Can we do that? I don't know what this man talking about either. I told you earlier what, what his background is. OK, whatever, bro. Um, T.I. said this. I think it would be helpful because I think it's a lot of conversation around reparations and so on and so forth. Let's pause there. Ain't no so ons and ain't no so forth. When you speak about reparations, say it with your chest and don't say it like you're joking about it. Part of the problem with these people is that they present a false narrative to Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, that we not serious. And you not serious for not being in that room and giggling with this man. You should have booed this man when he says so on and so forth. You wouldn't allow a Republican to say this. Why should he get to say this? This man has no idea what he's talking about. I had to come to you today because I got to get real about how much he don't know what he's talking about. Now, as I, this is what he said, as I have been enlightened by brother uh, Jay Morrison, we can't get, so you, so you have one guy that didn't go to college getting enlightened by another guy that didn't go to college that, excuse, you know, nothing against felons, but it, during that time he was a felon to my knowledge. You have him enlightening the other dude and nobody knows no economists or nothing. Let me say it again. Jay Morrison enlightened T.I. about reparations. The difference with Killer Mike is he got enlightened by Tone Talks. See, we sat down with Killer. I've talked to Killer Mike for two hours at a time, just about his background, things he went through, things I went through. That's politics in motion. That's how you get to a, actually a discussion where I'm not saying it delivers reparations, but you ain't never heard it off of people's tongue the way you've heard it now because of the discussions and the work that goes behind the scenes where Killer Mike then conveys that to, to Bernie Sanders in a, in a given moment. We moving, but ain't nobody did the work before we got here, so we got to shovel through a lot of concrete. But while we shoveling through concrete, T.I. and Jay Morrison are actually trying to sell the concrete. They're trying to build more concrete. These people don't know what they're talking about and teaching each other about stuff that don't make no sense. I want to have a discussion about the Revolt Summit because I'm looking at the Revolt Summit and I don't understand. Look, Malik R. said it ain't about college, it's about who puts in the work. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, let me tell you this. You can believe what you want, but I need an economist in that room. You can believe what you want. I need a media mogul that owns the Weather Channel negotiating for me and for black America. Let me give you an example, because you know everything. See, I, I'm, I'm not guessing. The difference between me and many of the other people you playing with is I am not guessing. When Byron Allen dealt with the, dealt with the uh, Comcast before the Memorandum of Understanding or right around when he heard about it, what he put is a, a newspaper ad out and told Comcast what needs to be in the Memorandum of Understanding. This is the memorandum that came before Revolt TV. I'm just giving you some inside information since you know everything. Look, 10, 10, 10, 10. This is the man they don't want to deal with. Black folks need 10% Comcast. You have 550 channels. Black folks need 10% of their channels. See, instead of standing with that, Sean Combs stood with, give me something and something and something and I'll make it work. Give us 50 channels. Now give each one of those channels 10 million subscribers. Guarantee a 10 year carriage. And I want 10 cents a month of subscriber. Now, those 50 channels aren't just for me as Byron Allen, they for black folks, the different black folks. I'm telling you that how you get there is an education. See, what we've done is basically said we want our kids to go to college, but then we ain't going to give no respect to people that went to school. I want to have a discussion because I got people talking and they don't know enough. On so many levels, from the economics to the actual business talking to people to talking to academics, I don't know how to close the gap, but you just need to watch the show. So look, let me, let me, let me keep going. Let's keep going with what he said. He said, as I have been enlightened by Brother Jay Morrison, we can't get reparations because we haven't officially been classified 
as a nationality. First of all, that's just not true. That's just, you just made that up. This is so. What's the education about? It's about not making shit up. So you just made that up, and and it don't make no sense. You don't need to be have a seat at the UN or a flag or a, none of that shit gets you reparations. What gets you reparations is a black agenda, black commitment, and the identity built around being Ados. Your family gets you reparations. So you just rambling and talking and saying stuff. And didn't nobody let you know, but if I was on the stage, I guarantee you I would have let you know, and that's why I'm not on that stage. Let me say this. Let me say this. The rest of this just went off the wheels. He said, we can't get reparations because we haven't officially been classified as a nationality. African American is not a nationality. He makes this, this argument for ADOS. Understand what he's saying. This is where he actually is accurate. And it cuts down all of the talk about Jamaicans and, J and Nigerians and everybody that says Kamala is both things. Look, we haven't officially been classified as a nationality. African-American is not a nationality. Black is not a nationality. Let's explain what, he, what, what actually he's saying. Africa is a continent. Africa is a continent. America is a country. Jamaica is a country. America is a country. Nigeria is a country. America is a country. Mexico is a country. America is a country. Again, Africa is not a country. It was a creation for the progeny of slavery. What happened as a result of immigration is a bastardization of that, of that category so that you can have double access. I get to be Nigerian American and whatever y'all got, I want some of that too. But you can't have none of my stuff because I have a nationality. What ADOS is, is putting up a gate and saying, this is our nationality. I don't care whether you think we recognize whether you recognize it you in my country ados don't need no flag because the american flag is our flag ados don't need no constitution because the american constitution is our constitution let me explain because ti don't know he just don't know he maybe okay he don't know let me explain the civil rights act of 1866 is the first time that we have civil rights in this country it comes about in 65 by six, and this is the Civil Rights Act that Comcast is trying to attack. Comcast, who, who controls Revolt. Come on, let's talk. I'm just, not, I'm not here for it. So in 1865, we're free. And in, 18, in 1865, we're free. And, and in 1866, they passed the Civil Rights Act of 1866, giving the newly freed slaves the right to contract. It is a direct reaction to the fact that we were being shut out. This is the thing that you see is that people don't understand that then what was birthed out of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 is the 14th Amendment, which gave everybody birthright citizenship. It's the first time you see equality in the Constitution. So effectively, that is our Constitution. We don't need no new one. T.I., we don't need no new Constitution to get reparations. You the one trying to... So you said us talking about reparations is putting the cart before the horse. That's what he said. I'll read the rest. But what you actually don't realize is you doing what you doing is putting the ticket gate in front of reparations that we already pay for. I don't need your ticket gate. I don't need you talking for me. I don't need you writing on the ticket because the number's going to be wrong. I don't need nothing from you but to move and to stop talking. So let's keep going. So you give, you, you can't give reparations to people that don't have an official nationality, a flag, or none of that makes sense, uh, or a constitution or a seat at the UN. You made that up, bro. You made all that up. They've given reparations multiple times to people that don't have a flag. Understand, look, I'm not even going to get into putting, and then he said something about putting the cart before the horse. For me, in many ways, that is symptomatic of the whole discussion. Um, it is basically a discussion that included no real tangibles about a black agenda. We have a black agenda on ADOS101.com. We have a conference coming up where we're going to actually have uh, congressmen. We're going to have the mayor of the city. We're going to have uh, we're going to have a, a, a presidential candidate, Marianne Williamson. We're going to have a discussion about what black folks actually need. Not a discussion about where black folks being celebrity wise. Not a discussion about grandeur or ideas of fantastical shit. We're going to have a discussion about reality. And so I look at this thing and I, I keep going. And you got to remember again, re let me read this just so you get a clear understanding of Revolt TV. As part of its arrangement, to acquire interest in NBC Universal, Comcast Corporation committed to carry several minority owned networks. We don't know what percentage. You can have 3% or 5% and you minority owned. 
you can have a woman and you don't have to have a black you can have a woman and you don't ados you, understand this how crazy this is the arrangement followed pressure led by maxine waters in congressional hearings in april of 2011 comcast solicited proposals for minority-owned networks in february 2012 comcast announced distribution arrangement for four networks including revolt another one was inspired by magic uh, these are people who don't know about running no tv station they just and we don't you know we don't really know if they ran the station it, fundamentally if you don't know about running the station that means you probably went out and got white people to actually tell you how to run the station at that point i don't trust any of the content i'm just saying let's talk i know i know everybody playing around about how fun it was and everything else to me i think black folks deserve better that's why i try to give it to y'all this kind of content is a discussion that is necessary for black folks to understand why that summit came out the way it did Again, I say this with all appreciation of Killer Mike. Thank you for mentioning me. And um, I, I'm glad I was able to help with your political education or your economics education in terms of America. But the work ain't done. And I'm saying to you today that everybody from T.I. to Jay Morrison, they, they can't speak for us. So I interviewed Byron Allen. Byron Allen, like I said before, when you add up the assets over the last three years, he was already worth 300, 400 million. He's probably worth, you know, several billion. And when I say several, you several billion what you find is that i've always advocated that i'd rather uh, we have a black middle class than billionaires but if we are going to have billionaires i need them to bring lawsuits against comcast in the interest of protecting the civil rights act of 1866. i need them to do that instead of what puffy did which is allow comcast cover you know when i say cover you allow comcast not to give us 50 stations but to give you a piece of one and that's a revolt and that's why it's failing it has no content. It has no support. It doesn't have the, the undergirding. It, it reflects the false narrative of what Puff Daddy believes black aspiration is. But he learned his lesson that we ain't got it, that we don't have the capital or the resource to undergird this thing. And that's why you're struggling now, bro. And so, like, I look at this thing and I come back to the discussion and I want to have it. What I believe needs to happen is that black America needs to awaken to the realities of the situation. I, I want to cut in a section of, of Byron Allen actually speaking and talking about black targeted versus black owned stations and how Revolt TV is really unclear who owns that. Let's just talk. If they saw themselves as heroes or if they saw themselves as lo losers, are you comfortable with that image and me having that control? And unanimously, everyone always says no. And I say, then why should I be comfortable letting you have 100% control over how I'm produced and depicted and distributed around the world and how my children grow up and see themselves? So we must own our own networks and our own platforms and websites and publications that we truly own. And we're not a front for wealthy white people, but we truly own it and control the narrative. That is the reason. Can I you still explain that a little bit more when you say, because I've heard that before from you, and I think sometimes it gets lost. In more specific sense, can you explain the difference between black targeted and black owned companies? Black, I mean, black targeted is black targeted. That doesn't mean that the people who actually own it and care about how you're produced and seen own it and control it. I mean, you need to, you want it, you want that to be authentic. The ownership needs to be like, I had the pleasure of growing up with Ebony and Jet on my coffee table. And I knew that I could trust that publication because I knew who owned it and they were really about inspiring the African-American community and helping us to go to the next level. And at the same time, they chronicled all of our successes and made sure that we paid respect to the people who deserve that respect who had gone on to achieve exceptional levels of success. I think it's important that we have that in our community, and unfortunately we don't, because a lot of advertisers have pushed us to the side, and a lot of distribution systems have pushed us to the side. Now, the reason why I sued, now, it's a big deal. Wait, can I, but can I ask you one question, just, sure. just so the audience who isn't as aware? When we look at BET, when we look at Aspire, are these, are these black-targeted or black-owned companies? They're black-targeted, and, and, you know, they're black. Viacom owns BET. And, uh, you know, Aspire, we're, we're asking in, through legal documents to understand the relationship of Leo Hendry and Aspire. So we want to know, because we want to know, we want to have real, authentic, 100% African-American ownership of these platforms. We deserve it. Look, the cable industry, this is why I say, hey, black people, wake up and get a calculator. You're a multi-trillion dollar industry, but you get paid nothing. 
the cable industry spends $70 billion a year licensing cable networks. $70 billion. Black people get zero. We're the only community that would allow that to happen. No other community would stand for that. Uh, we, we do business with a lot of major corporations, Coca-Cola. They don't spend a nickel with black-owned media for the most part. There are a lot of major corporations out there that pull money out of our neighborhoods, out of our communities, but they're not. See, what happens is, here is that institutionalized racism. When white people talk to other white people about business, they talk about business. When black people go to white corporate America, white corporate America starts talking about charity, donations, and who they've given money to. We're not a charity. We're not a donation. Mm. We're not that burden that you need to subsidize because we are a bunch of stupid baboons who can't add two plus two. We're a business. We're brilliant. We're resourceful. We're, we're articulate. We're competitive. But white corporate America has a way of treating us like we're a burden and we don't count. And when you look at all the hundreds of billions of dollars that are spent in advertising and none of it going to black owned media, that speaks to why your newspapers and websites are going out of business and going away and they don't exist. When you look at $70 billion being spent licensing cable networks and none of it going to black owned ownership, that speaks to jobs in the community. Now, for me as an African American entrepreneur to be uh, and to sue the first African-American president of the United States for racial discrimination and contracting, there is a severe problem. Now let's talk about the law that I use. It is Civil Rights Act 1866, Section 1981. It was put on the books to protect the newly freed slaves 150 years ago to make sure that we, had economic inclusion because they knew 150 years ago we weren't going to get that economic inclusion and here we are today we still haven't achieved it. so essentially you know the other thing i want to talk about is jay morrison who asked the question um of, of ti i don't understand what happened with the tulsa real estate fund i wasn't going to touch it again but he keep running around and jumping into discussions you didn't create the reparations discussion you don't really understand it so just go sell fun your fund and make that work. What I feel is happening is that black people is that people at large that aren't in this space, whether they're in music or aspiration, do for self strife, are realizing this space is moving the dial. So they're trying to mix their grifter like model into into activism, and they don't mix together. When me and Yvette did our conference, as an example, we didn't charge you a hundred dollars, or we didn't charge you seventy five dollars, or and it, it costs to have security and to have uh, the venue and then to have performers. It costs a lot of money. That's why I usually charge that. And myself, along with Simmons College and Yvette, we, we are actually undergirding this, not your $15 ticket. What other people do is they charge you $60, $100. They try, to, they try to package the deal so that you can fly and then they make money off of the whole package. We're not doing that because we're not here to capitalize off of you. We're not here to take your money and then treat like millionaires. Now, at the end of the day, we do take donations for support. So we do got to run a channel or a station, or we do got to try to actually do a conference. But we're not out here as, as super capitalists in the activism space. We're activists that may do, uh, you know, 100 shirts, as Yvette is doing. We're activists that actually are just doing an extra bit of just capitalism on a, 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 a capitalism a little bit of capitalism to keep the activism going though i say this because jay morrison to me has not answered maybe somebody can explain has the tulsa real estate fund worked we we two years out i believe did you get your money back did you get returns what are the numbers in addition i believe he still has not answered to the man i talked to i talked to a man who accused jay morrison of actually fraud he said that he 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 basically sold he, he had Jay Morrison sell his mama house and then the money disappeared or something like that. He talked to me for like 30 minutes and it's in the bankruptcy file in his name. So and I've talked I talked to him in detail. I don't understand how you can do that and then still nobody like really questions that and then you don't get honest about how real that is as part of your whole like life right now. 
you can actually go pull up the bankruptcy paperwork that Jay Morrison did and see that yourself. I'm not saying this to out him because I already did the show. I'm just bringing back up because he decided that he's going to jump in the middle of a question about reparations that he didn't do the work to create. I don't need you talking or teaching about reparations. Just teach about what you teach about. I'll cut in a clip of that show. You can go catch the whole show on your own. Well, let me say what I, what I mean. If you're really about black folks, just take a $30,000 salary for the next two years. No extra money for marketing and pictures and whatever else you're doing. Take $30,000 till you make this thing profitable. And if you don't make it profitable, give people back their money. I think that might be a little hard because you want to split up 500,000 amongst seven people or some kind of obscene thing because you don't know that only 5% of black families make more than $112,000. You want to pay everybody like they in the top 5% of black families as if this fund is profitable already. Come on. So when I look at this thing, coming back to it, it asks, this section is supposed to tell us about the company. And it says to see the description page. You know, that's where it says, it says see the description page. And when I go to this description page, this is all I get. Tulsa Real Estate Fund LLC is an emerging growth company, which was formed on July 20th, 2016. We have commenced only limited operations, primarily focused on organizational matters in connection with this offering. We intend on generating revenues in two ways, from quick turnaround assets and long-term hold investments. Now that sounds real good, I think, if I don't know nothing about investing. He didn't say nothing there. The only way that you can understand that is by reading another SEC for it. So I'm going I'm to share one with y'all. I went out and found a company that did a, a, a REIT, a, a R-E-I-T, Real Estate Investment Trust, not just a R-E-T without the investment. And this is their same section. Granite Point Mortgage Trust. We are a Maryland corporation that focuses primarily on directly originating, investing in, and managing senior floating rate commercial mortgage loans and other debt. Concurrently with the closing of this offering, we will acquire our predecessor in his portfolio, which consists of 41 commercial real estate investments with a principal balance of $1.6 billion with an additional $181.9 million of potential future funding. We will be externally managed by Pine River Capital, a global asset management firm. We will be externally managed by Pine River Capital, a global management firm in charge of $9 billion in assets. Make my money feel safe. You know, what they're going to say is that's a white company. And what I say back is I watched your video and all you did was pretty much follow a white company. Went to somebody's meeting and you learned this thing by watching somebody on a chalkboard and now you're just going to do it. There's no genius in that. And also then you can't say, I can't go to the same company that, that you did that with and get a better deal or not to, a safer deal. Let me see. Let me explain what I mean. So I'm looking at this thing and, and, and I had to get into Jermaine Morrison because he added so much different kinds of language in this thing about himself and about managing things and about being having a key man clause which doesn't really I, I, you know honestly I, I had no idea why he added this key man clause we are significantly dependent on jay morrison the loss or unavailability of his services would have an adverse effect on business operations and prospects and that we may not be able to obtain new management under the same financial agreements which could result in the loss of your investment that's not a common term as an attorney, the only time I've seen them is in deals like when you do production deals because say you, you do the deal with a particular producer, if he lead that company, you don't want to be with that company if they sell it or something. This is reverse. He got your money, but then if he leave, your money might disappear. Why would that be in the SEC document? It's not in the granite document. But now once you open that Pandora's box, once you start talking about I did a million dollar deal by 28 in a world where black folks don't really do million dollar deals all that often in a world where black folks, all of us struggle with student loans. We'll get to that in a second. You open up a whole Pandora's box for me to ask about you. So the two things that came to me and now I kind of have it, have it solidified 
is this lawsuit and this bankruptcy with Jay Morrison. So, you know, I'm I'm literally figuring out how I wanna how I wanna do this. I don't reach out to nobody. I'm not an investigative journalist. I'm an attorney. But we don't have black media. And when you don't have black media, who steps to the call? Dash radio. Tone toss. Come on. And so like this individual, I think his name is Michael Levant. He reached out to me through, he reached out to me in my direct message and said he wanted to tell me his story. And I say, okay, now you might not re remember that name, but it's the name on a lawsuit that Jay Morrison was involved in. It, I pulled it up on the last video I did. And this is what, what Michael Avant says to me. I've known Jermaine my whole, my whole life. You know, we are church people. And what he said is that he, he inherited land. He inherited land from his family, built a house on that land using equity from his current home, and then brought Jay in, Jermaine is his name, as a quarter percent interest owner, or a quarter percent interest partner, let me say that. Next thing you knew, it was sold out from under him. He sued for his $200,000, the charges were breach of contract, failure of consideration, fraud, fraudulent inducement, fraudulent transfer. And they settled at 200,000. This is all public record. They settled at $200,000. So a settlement is not like the judge orders you. That means y'all sat down and you said, I'm gonna pay you. Let's just get rid of this. I owe you your money. And then that's in 2009. So since 2009, he ain't got paid. So then in 2016, Jermaine Morrison files a BK. And one of the, the 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 people that he's trying not to trying to put in the BK is this Michael Levant guy. Understand this is what we're dealing with. So we got a whole thing about Tulsa real estate and black Tulsa, Oklahoma, and black people losing their land and being stolen from. It don't matter if it's a white person or a black person that do it. The whole idea is that black people have been stolen from. And I'm with that concept. But if I find out that you stole from black folks, I'm on you. And my point of doing this is for not only for somebody like Michael Levant, who seemed like a good hearted man, but also for all the other black people that believe in the shit you talking about. Cause there will be another black guy behind you that went to Columbia that really know about investing. That's going to really have a plan. And because your plan might not have worked cause it never was set out right. He ain't going to get black people to believe in it. I just wanted to have a discussion today because I feel like the revolt summit in many ways, I respect that we're gonna talk about a black agenda, but it's no point if you have people who don't understand a black agenda speaking about a black agenda. I really think that what we have to do is get real about how much black celebrity and the decadent veil is keeping us from getting honest about the reality of our situation. I just wanted to come to you today. I appreciate everybody tuning in. We got about almost 2000 people live on a Monday. It's like a small cable show. And so when y'all say to me, why didn't you on the, Revo I don't need to be on the revolt show. I don't need to. Uh, I'm just telling you right now. All I need to do is to talk to you, the person that's watching the screen right now, and tell you that when we look at wealth stratification, the bottom 90% of black folks is worth $700 billion, 775. When we look at wealth stratification, the top 10% of white folks is worth, uh, the top 10% of white folks, 8 million families, is worth almost $75 trillion. And I need to tell you, essentially, the top 10% of white black folks, let alone T.I., who might be in the top 0.1%, largely don't understand the state of black America. And I don't know if they are here to actually change that or actually keep their position. I'm out. I just want to have that discussion. Look for this um, later on with some images and some uh, clips. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Please support on, on this uh, super chat and also share the video once it's finally up. We need to have this discussion because the Revolt TV Summit, I don't know what it really was. I'm thinking about uh, continuing this discussion on Friday on Dash Radio, give you guys a chance to call in and give your opinions. I'll probably do that if nothing else comes up this week. Dash Radio, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or the Tone Talks YouTube, and we'll have the discussion. Please take this week to digest everything. Look at the Memorandum of Understanding from 2010. You can look up the Revolt TV background for yourself to actually see that what I'm saying is the truth. Watch the whole Jay Morrison video. Watch the whole Byron Allen video. Do your own due diligence. I'm not telling you what to think, but I am telling you some ain't right here.